So my name is Matthew Silverman. I was just introduced by Keith Andrew on the Keith Andrew Show. Um, I think he's doing an amazing job, and you should definitely watch his show. My name is Keith Andrew, and this is episode 678. That's right, 678 of the Keith Andrew Network. Today we have Matt Silverman. I just want to say thank you for being a guest on my talk show. Thank you for having me. Now the honor's all mine. For people who want to know what the talk show is about, the whole point of my talk show is to show people that even with having a word and disability, I can still amount to something. And at the same time, I'm able to turn myself into an example for people out there dealing with any types of learning disabilities and disabilities to never give up and prove people wrong. Prove to them that labels do not dictate who you are and who you're going to be. It's a prove to them you somehow out to something. So that being said, it's going to be a half hour of your time, give or take, between 20, 27 minutes, half hours, see how it goes. And for people who want to know who Matt Silverman is, you are a professional actor, a per, a per I can't speak, a professional musician, a chef, and an, a pilot. Yeah, uh, that sounds about correct. Yeah. So the first one I want to ask you is I'm going to ask you the easy questions, then we can go to the hard hitting ones. All right. So the first one is how is life growing up? Um, life growing up right now, it's pretty good. I mean, um, coronavirus and everything, it's very sort of, uh, it's, it's complicated. So school is tough to do online. Um, cause it's, I, uh, I graduate tomorrow from, uh, eighth grade and it's sort of complicated. Um, you don't get like the same feeling of being in a classroom. But um, I'm sort of, I'm using this time to relax, um, chill out. It's, it's pretty good, I think. You know, in some uh, retrospect, I'm happy I'm not in school anymore because I don't have to, I guess, you know, everyone knows what it's like to be homeschooled. But for me, I have ADD, so I, you constantly, I need to be, I have to be active. But, you know, an alternative reality, maybe I would have been homeschooled if this happened during the 90s or at the late 2000s. But, you know, that's, hey, at least you're learning, and congratulations on moving on to the high school. What? Oh, yeah. Wait, did you ask a question? Because I, I understand. Yeah, I mean, what you said was great. No, uh, absolutely. And the next question I was going to ask you is, okay. is there, was there any sports that you were interested in playing or any sports you did not like doing um so uh i'll also relate this back to school so i love doing tennis i love playing i love playing tennis i love skiing um and for both what uh the coronavirus sort of took away a little bit um school i was joining i was on the tennis team but unfortunately this happened so we weren't able to really play anything play any games of tennis against the other schools and skiing i was actually going to go on a ski trip the week uh after all of this was supposed to all of this started and that never happened because our flights got canceled um so it's unfortunate with uh coronavirus right now but I love to do, uh, I love to play tennis. I love to ski. I love baseball. Baseball is really fun. Hockey is also really fun. What about, what were your least favorite activities that you had to do? Um, least favorite? Oh, this, I'm not, so I'm not so much a fan of basketball, playing basketball. Um, I mean, for me, that's hard to do. Um, Soccer. I used to play soccer. I used to be good at it. Now I don't really play it, so I'm not great at it anymore. You know, for me, I like playing basketball, but I have slow reflexes. If you say to me, all right, Keith, hey, we're going to throw you the ball, I'm mentally prepared. I hate people that say, hey, think fast, and I lost count how many times I got whacked in the face. Yeah. 
I mean, that's a lot of the times it's like, oh, think fast. They throw you the ball and you're like, what? I can't catch that. You kind of like have a spastic moment. Mm -hmm. But the one thing I hated the most was uh, track. I was never a runner. And I don't have a picture on me, but I can show you on Instagram. I was never big fan of running because I never, you know how in Jumbo Buck, you know, they're all marching in the line and then they all pile up. Mm -hmm. Well, I never wanted that to happen or be known for the kid who's like, oh, why is he running with us? He always causes a pile up. So I tried to avoid that type of thing. Yeah. So um, I joined the, uh, I did join the track team um, and I wasn't the greatest runner. I used to be that person who'd like, in a way, hold the team up. I wasn't the slowest, but I also wasn't the fastest. Um, so I worked on it. I definitely tried to work on it at least. I'm getting better. I'm definitely getting better. Um, but I mean, it's sometimes unfortunate when you're like running with a group of people and then they're like, come on faster. And you're like, I'm going the fast, I, the fastest I can. Um, so that's like for track, I like it, but I sort of don't like it because of those reasons. Why did he ever cause a pile up? Um, I never caused like a complete pile up, but um, sometimes when you're like the last behind and I can always normally like make up some time sort of by if someone's slow, I can sort of make up a little bit of time, but not enough to be like uh, last place to first place ever. All right. Now the next question I was going to ask you is who influenced you to become a professional actor and how many years have you been acting? Ooh, that's, a, that's sort of a tough question for who influenced me. Um, I mean, when I was younger, I used to, I would still watch TV a lot, but I used to watch like Nickelodeon, uh, the Nickelodeon channel a lot. And I'd be like, oh, I want to be on that show or I want to be on that show. So it was just like a whole bunch of sh watching shows. And um, my mom and dad are friends with some actors. So um, Liam Neeson if you know who that is, a uh, pretty big actor. He sort of, he was the one who, not in a way got me into it, but he was the one who sort of like carried it through. Like a, you should become an actor. Cause a lot of other people who I knew were like, oh, it's a waste, of, it's gonna be a waste of time. It's not gonna work out and stuff like that. Um, and I started acting in fourth grade. Um, I did a, my school, did a show um i went to a jew i go to a jewish day school um so it's called uh the midrash hour because it's sort of jewish themes and whatever and i played a scrawny old woman who was like didn't know how to who's like really really old and really really like small skinny had a high voice in fourth grade and everyone really loved it and i was like you know Maybe I should try to work or, or try to go for um, stage or uh, movie roles. And of course, you start off with background, background stuff, basically what people start off with. And then you work for, you work up to getting an agent and you do the school shows, which is what I do. And um, you start getting to short films and feature films and stuff like that. No, absolutely. Now, I know this is just uh, trying to find the words. This is your time, but you did catch my interest when you mentioned your parents were actors. Are they like big celebrity actors or are they like, okay, they've been in a couple of films? Um, well, no, I'm saying like my parents knew some actors. So um, they, um, yeah, my parents know some actors through, um, they were, uh, they go to like, the same gym as a whole bunch of actors and um and they've met through all of that stuff and they're good a lot of them are good friends a lot of those actors are really famous but them they're not they're not actors really hey if your parents can put a good word in for me i would love to have lee and Newson on my show <laughs> now the next question i was going to ask you is what were some of your favorite commercials and skits have you been on tv um, so, uh, background, yes, I have been on TV, um, 
feature films, no. Uh, short films, no, because most of the time short films don't get onto like TV. Um, we're seeing still how one of them's going, if it might go onto Netflix or something. Um, what's the other thing? Um, commercials. So I filmed, uh, I wasn't in a true commercial, but I was doing a, a, like a print ad for um, a show called Wife Swap. And there's like a new Wife Swap thing going on NBC right now. And um, I was in one of the ads for it and it was in Times Square. And it was really cool is on one of the big screens in Times Square. Oh, that's really cool. You know, when I, I never took, you know, taken the bus, but I passed the buses in the city. You know, did you have like the big banner? It's like, I, every time I see the big banner, I'm always like, one day that's gotta be me on there. You know, yeah. I saw that you were actually, um, I saw your number, you have a 917 error code, so you're fun. You're from New York, or are you? Um... I am. I am from New York. Yeah, and I'm in New York right now. I'm not in the city, which is normally where I am. I'm at my country house. If you don't mind me for acting, where in New York are you based? Um, Upper West Side. All right, so you're like in in the city. For me, I'm in the city. Yeah, I am in the city and had an Upper West Side. All right. Well, if I ever have an event, you should definitely come. Yeah. Um, for me, I'm an hour and a half away from the city. I'm more near, you ever been to um, the Catskills, uh, Woodbury Commons? Yeah, I've been there, yeah. We're actually, um, where my country house is, is like an hour and a half north of the city. Oh, nice. Hey, if you're ever in the area, I was got lunch or something. Yeah. Yeah, I, uh, of course, you have to wait for the quarantine to be over. But you yeah. <laughs> so the next thing I've had really caught my interest is you are a pilot. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I'm a pilot in training, so I can't officially get my license yet because um, I need to be need to be 16 to get a certificate so I can fly alone and I can um, help out with not help out truly with companies. But like um, I know some people who are 16 years old are helping deliver uh, masks for um, the coronavirus. Um, 17 is when I can get my license so I can start flying people, not for like big airlines, but just in a tiny plane. Um, but I am, I'm working towards my license and I'm only 14 right now, but, um, I'm working towards it. I'm getting some hours, of course, not as many right now because of the coronavirus, but yeah, I'm learning. Oh, I wish you the best of luck in that. Thank you. Now, do you ever want to, I was going to ask you about, I want to stay on the acting thing for a second. Mm -hmm. For people who want to follow in your footsteps, what was the very first thing that, well, let me, let me ask you like this. What was the very first show that made you say, this is what I want to do for the rest of my life? That's the first question. Um, like when I was younger, like when I watched the TV show, um, Really, like, pretty much anything that was on. I know it's very vague, um, not specific at all, but, um, I mean, um, when I started, like, actually starting to grow up and whatever, uh, when I started remembering a lot of shows, um, iCarly was one of them that I really liked. Uh, Henry Danger, The Thundermans, all that stuff now all ended, um, but when I was younger, when I was like six or seven years old, I was really interested in maybe being on a show. And of course, it's a lot harder to get on one of those than I used to think it was. You know, it's funny because I used to watch iCarly, and I watched it, and, I, and I'm like, huh, they're using iMovie. So I go, no, everyone apparently is using iMovie. But it's funny because it's 2006, 2005, 2006, and they're promoting iMovie, so. And the show could have continued, it, it could come back. The problem is uh, she doesn't want to do it anymore. She wants yeah. to be a, a normal person. But I, I mean, okay, yes, a childhood's good for you. You, you know, it keeps you grounded. But you shouldn't, you have this open window of saying, okay, you can do this for a little bit, but when is it time to go back you, where people start forgetting who you are yeah 
Um, yeah. But the next question I want to add to you is, after you saw the TV show or film that got you interested, what was the very first step that you take? Did you take acting classes? Uh, would you recommend taking acting classes? Yeah, so um, acting classes were, um, so I'd, I saw the show and I would see my school shows and I would be like, oh, maybe I could be in one of those shows. And I did one of the school shows, which I was talking about, that got me into acting. And the first thing I did was, because after I met with Liam and talked with him, he said, acting classes, those will be your best friends. And I can relate, those will be your best friends. Even when you're, even if you're an amazing actor, I know a whole bunch of people who still take classes. Maybe they're teaching classes, but they're a lot of them are taking classes. No, so I'll oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. Uh, so I'm doing a class right now, and um, like an online class um, during quarantine, and um, some of them, some of the actors are just starting out, and a lot of them are. Some of one person has been in like 160 episodes of um, a show, and it, it's crazy to think about how uh, small actors and big actors can come together and work. No, absolutely. You don't know who you got to be in class with. Mm -hmm. You know, for me, I actually came across an article in a newspaper and a time travel record. And um, it was about acting classes, you know. And at the time, you know, I was watching Suits, one of my favorite TV shows, but they ran into the ground that they didn't know how to end the series. Uh, but I wanted to be Mike Ross. So I wanted to have a boss like Harvey Specter. You know, life is this, but I like this. You know, one of those things. But um, when I was thinking about it, it's like, oh, let's ask my sister if she'd be interested in taking acting classes. So we went. Uh, the guy's like, oh, it's six hundred dollars for semester one. I went, okay. Then semester two is twelve hundred. I'm thinking to myself, all right, that's twenty four hundred dollars. And then he says, but just because, it, and you can relate to this, just because you take acting classes doesn't guarantee you work. Yes, you get the experience and you got the training, but. It's a gamble. For me, $2,400 is a lot of money. And throwing it on a gamble, it's, I didn't see it. So that's why I'm focusing on my talk show more. Say, I've been doing this for seven and a half years. I'm very passionate about this. I know this is stable for me. Why? I know you shouldn't put yourself in handcuffs and say, this is what I want, and put yourself in a bubble, you know, handcuff bubbles or whatever scenario you want to make up. You don't want to put yourself in a corner that said you have a one track mind. You want to be open to every situation that comes your way. You want to have multiple opportunities. You want to be flexible and say, you can do this, you can do that. I can't snap my fingers. So I'm saying to people out there, yes, if you see an opportunity, you should definitely go and do it. But you should be smart about it and say, you know, I put all my time and effort into this, but it didn't really work out. Do you feel like, you know, because you're an actor and you're also a musician, a pilot, you have all these great things going for you. But... Do you feel if you just focus on one thing that you're setting yourself up for failure? Um, so I'll also relate back to the gambling about like acting classes and whatever. Um, definitely, I sort of, in the same way, um, sort of feel sometimes like acting classes can be a gamble because they always say, you're not, you may not get a role from this. And for me, that's sometimes okay. And then when I was younger, I was like, no, I want to get the role. But I realized that with, like, with practice, you can get better and better and better. And um, as much as sometimes, like, you're probably not going to get a show off after your first class, of course. Yeah. Um, it's sort of like a, it's, um, it's a lose-win scenario. So it's like, 
you lose, you're losing money and you're losing money and you're losing money. But whenever you have that break, you can just like sort of skyrocket. So, um, of course, it's sometimes pretty rare for that to happen, um, but it can happen. And then your question on like one way, if you focus on one thing, are you leading to, to failure? Um, I think if you're really passionate about something, um, I think it could work. I think it definitely could work, but of course, I think you do want to have something as a backup because if it's, if you go, if you're passionate and you're passionate and you're like, I'm going to do this in real life and it's going to, uh, I'm not sure if it's going to work out. If it doesn't work out something in there, you're not going to be happy. So at least like try to find a base, like something that you can start off with and sort of, yeah, keep going with it. No, I agree with you 100%. And I give you an example, you know, like you have, I, I mentioned this before, I say it again, acting, you're a professional actor, pilot, chef, musician. Actually, I do want to talk to you about the two last things, but you have all these different things. You have four things that you're not going to put all your eggs in one basket today. If being a professional actor doesn't work, you got to crawl into a ball and never wake up. You know, you can be, you know, Plan B, be a musician. Plan, um, you know, play instruments. Not actually pull a rabbit out of the hat. <laughs> um, plan C, you can be a chef. Uh, plan D, you can go to the army and you, you know, fly air, um, helicopters. There's always good to have multiple backup plans. You can't say, okay, I have plan A and watch it go to crap. Then you can kind of wonder and, I wasted six, seven years. I don't know what to do now. But you have a great plan because you have, you know, for an example, you say you're a professional chef. Well, I am chef, not completely professional, but um, I mean, I like to cook. And a lot of the time, um, a lot of people like chefs are, it's pretty easy to get a job as a chef, whether it be at a McDonald's or a, um or a restaurant in new york city that's really yummy um it really like sort of so you, at least in like the four things that i really like to do which is um act play piano um learn to fly a plane and uh like to cook um all those things sort of have if you see with the four things there's one main backup plan so like being a pilot i know that i can if I pass a test, I can work for some sort of airline, whether it be um, a small one that flies two places or it be for something like Delta. And um, that's the same thing with a chef with like, you could be a chef at McDonald's or you can be a chef at a really expensive, fancy place. Um, and then you sort of take risks with something like acting and becoming a musician and I was talking about this recently with uh, my family. If you become, you, some musicians are incredible, incredible musicians that never get heard, that never, yeah. yeah. So um, like you can have composers, Broadway composers who may be incredible, but the chance of someone being better than that composer is very, very likely. So, what? oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. So you some you sometimes take risks with stuff like that, but if you're set on a goal, then of course go for that goal. No, I agree. But at the same time, you know, just because you know, you can always edit anything. You know, you can be a horrible singer, and you can like that stupid song, um, "Royal." You know, when she came out to sing, you know, "Royal," and she signed her stage by herself. But you heard backup singers. Now, mind you, you're on stage by yourself. Who's doing your backup singing? Then we, everyone figured out she's lip singing. And that's the thing. You can have talent, but you know, another example I can give you is perfect. Maroon 5. You know, they're good. 
on CD. But when I saw Maroon 5 in concert, they were horrible. Absolutely horrible. When I saw uh, Meatloaf, Meatloaf is one of my favorite um, singers. But when I got to see him at Jones Beach, sound system was number one, it was raining. Okay, so that was a lot of fun. And number two, the sound system was terrible. So you can be a great singer, but when you do editing, you never see them. Like um, Adele, Adele sounds great because they can edit her. You, you don't see Adele singing in person anymore. Um, you look at Mari Cyrus. Now, she occasionally has some good songs, but she doesn't tour. So there's certain bands that can make the transition from the studio to the stage and sound absolutely perfect. And there's other ones where you get to see, and it's kind of like nails on a chalkboard. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Well, with that being said, I do have a couple questions for you off the air. Uh, we're wrapping up. The two last questions I want to ask you. The first one is, how can people follow you on social media? Are you on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Stage 32? I am on Instagram. I am on, um, I mean, Snapchat is personal, sort of. So I'm on uh, Instagram. I'm, I think, yeah, pretty sure I have a Twitter. And that's pretty much it right now. Um, Facebook is probably coming soon, coming next. Um, so yeah. Well, one thing I would recommend is having the top four. LinkedIn, definitely, because you can get to interact with professionals. Well, try to. You know, a lot of people lie on there. Um, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Those are my big four that I go to. Everything else is just extra noise and distractions. But I would recommend folks on at least top three, top four, whatever ones you want to do. But you should actually have those main ones. On my last question for you, wrapping up, when I first approached you to be a guest on my talk show, what was your first honest reaction, and what you what made you say yes, and how do you feel now? Um, well, I mean, it's a talk show, so it's um, at least during like quarantine or whatever. And I would still love to do a talk show like in person, but this one gives me something to do. But it it seems. It's fun. It's fun to do. It's fun to do a talk show. And since I've never done a real talk show before, um, it's definitely something that I can put under my belt, say I've done. And, um, and talk shows are, they're sort of personal in a way. So you get to know the, per you get to know the person who you're talking to um, and vice versa. Yeah, uh, you, the person gets to know you. And you can... Yeah, yeah, I, that's pretty much it, yeah. But um, I, that's what I say to people when you're a guest on the show, you know, like especially for wrestlers, it isn't going to be on those stupid episodes where, you know, who are the good people, who are the bad, you know, who holds you back, who tries to bury people. For me, my show is I'm making a statement about disabilities and how I'm turning myself into an example. And plus you're making a new friend at it. So you're killing two birds with one stone. Yeah, definitely. But with that being said, it was a real honor and privilege having you as a guest. And yeah, I, didn't, and I just want to say thank you for your time. Hi, I'm Paisley Blackburn. I'm Ashley Burgess. Hi, my name is Jeanette Abney. Hi, I'm Sharon Spink. Hey, this is Samantha Moore. Hi. I'm Melody Jones. Hi, my name is Becky Yee. Hi, you're watching the Keith Andrew Network.